In this episode of What's Hot, I have seven new Canva features to talk about. Are you ready for this? What is up everyone, Ronnie here. Welcome back to our channel. Today it's episode 22 of What's Hot in Canva. So we are going to talk about the new Canva features for this month. But before we jump into this, I would like to address the excitement that you guys have shown about Canva Docs. Canva Docs is a new product by Canva that was announced at Canva Create and that you guys might have discovered via the recap video we've done a couple of weeks ago. So a lot of questions have popped up in the comments about Canva Docs, like when will it be available? Will it have this feature or that feature? Or what is Canva Doc all about? Well, guys, I'm going to ask you to be patient about this. And though Canva has given us, the Canva experts, early access to the product so we can test it and give them some feedback, I cannot show you any actual footage of what Canva Docs looks like at this stage because we have this agreement with Canva that we cannot show it. But what we could do, if you guys are interested, it, so let me know in the comments. I could create a video where I don't show you, but I can tell you about the things that already exist and that are already publicly known, the things that we can discuss about. So if you want me to recap everything we already know about Canva Docs, let me know in the comments and I will start working on this video. Now, that being out of the way, let's start with the new features for this month. The first new feature I would like to talk about today is called Model Photo Editor. And it is a new way for users to edit their photos when they're using Canva on a desktop. So this is not yet available for mobile. What else do we know about this feature? Well, it is rolled out to all users and it is also available for pro and free users alike. All right, so let's jump into my Canva account and I will show you what Model Photo Editor is all about, okay? The first thing you need to know is that this feature is going to be found from your projects, okay? So it's not available in the editor per se, but you will find it from the homepage when you click on project and when you start browsing your images, okay? So let's go to my images tab. And here you will see a bunch of different images that you have uploaded into Canva. So let's use this photo of Diana and I. This is a photo we took at the beach for my birthday uh, recently. So this is the photo, okay? So when I clicked on it, this is what happened. And this is what Canva calls the model photo editing feature because it opened a new module that's why we call it model, I, I suppose, from which you can uh, start editing your photos. So I think this is very convenient for users who want to use Canva, not so much to design with their visuals, but to basically edit their photos, to color correct their photos, or maybe to apply specific effects to the photos. So let's quickly go over the different things we can do here with this photo. The first thing I notice is that I can use the wheel on my mouse, this wheel right here, to zoom in and out on this photo. So this is pretty convenient. Next, I see I have a tool right here. This is my background remover. This photo is already without a background. So you could remove the background of the photo from right here if you are a pro user. And then I have a bunch of filters. If I click on see all, I see all the different filters. There are no new filters per se, but it's just like the filters are now here. So I can apply the filter just by clicking on it. And just like in from within the editor, you can play around with the intensity of that filter. Okay, so you can do that. Uh, you can go to your more extreme filters like your color pop. Something else I like here is that I have a button right here that is uh, showing me the before and after. You see, if I hold down this button, like when you hover over the button, it says hold down. When I click on it, I see my original photo. And when I release my click, I see the applied effect or correction to it. So that's pretty neat. Let's go back to my original photo. Okay, which is this one. And let's get out of the filters. I want to show you the second tab here. The first tab is effect. The second tab is adjust. Okay, so when I click on adjust, it will open all of my adjustment settings for my photo. So it's again, just like in the editor. Okay, so from here, I can add some uh, contrast, brightness, highlights, etc., etc. So you have your, I would say, classic adjustment. You can reset all adjustments right here. And then the last tab right here is to crop your photo. And Canva will have a bunch of preset formats for you. 
So you can use that. So I really like that you have all of these options, these convenient options for editing your photos in a clean module and you can just play around with this. And then once you're done, you have a couple of options. Okay, so you can, let me come back to adjust. You can use the photo in a design. So when I click here, Canva is going to open a, or create a new document with the size of my photo that carries the size of my photo. I'm gonna close that for now, come back here and show you a couple of other options you can do. You can save your adjustment, okay? Again, let me show you the original, okay, darker, and I want to save this version. So you can save by clicking on the save button. And here again, you have two options. The first one, you can save a copy. So you will have your original, and a copy carrying the effect, the adjustments you just made. Or you can download your photo as you see here. So this is also very convenient that you don't have to, I would say, overwrite your current file and lose the original, you can create a copy. And then one last thing I find pretty useful in this module, if you click on the I button right here, you can start adding tags to your photo, which is quite convenient as well. So I'm gonna add the tag Rondi and update and maybe birthday and then click on enter and then I'm gonna update and now my photo is going to carry these two tags, all right? So that's the first thing I wanted to show you. This is the model photo editor that has just been rolled out to everyone. So go out there and edit some photos. The second new feature is quite similar to the one we just talked about, but this time it is for video. The feature is called Video Adjustments and it basically enables users to bring all sorts of adjustments to their video. So let me show you how it works. For this, I'm going to switch over this tab right here where I have a video. It's a short video of myself in the Sydney studio we used to have. It's really nothing special. It's just a little bit of a Wait, talking head. Want? This is Ronnie from Canva. Yeah, so just a talking head in the studio. And the way you will access these video adjustments is very simple. Make sure you first select your video. You have to click on the video first and then locate the button that says edit video, okay? I'll click on that and then Canva will open this menu right here. Those of you who are pro users will see the background, the video background remover right here. If you haven't yet tried the video background remover, I have a dedicated video for this. I'm gonna leave a card right here. If you want to watch this one after you finish this one, don't open it yet do it after. But yeah, video background remover is pretty awesome. This is not what I want to show you. What I want to show you is the second tab right here, After Effects called Adjust. When I click here, I have access to my video adjustment settings. And just like for the photos, I can modify the brightness, okay, more or less brightness, the contrast, bunch of different settings I can play around with. Here, my video was already pretty well balanced because it was shot in a semi-professional studio. But for those of you who are shooting in maybe less good conditions, these adjustments could be very useful. For example, if you want to make your video black and white, very simple, you just uh, find the saturation slider and bring it all the way to the left. And now you have a black and white video. So this feature is very straightforward. It's just some adjustments that we used to have for photos now available for videos. The feature is going to be available for all users. So that is pretty cool from Canva to make that available to all. And it should already be rolled out to everyone. So here again, I invite you guys to find it and try it out for yourself. All right, moving on to the third new feature already. And this one is a very interesting one. So buckle up. It is called text to images and it is Canva's attempt to emulate the DAL-E movement and all of these images generated by artificial intelligence. Before we jump into the demo and I show you where to find it and how to use it, I would like to give you guys a bit of information about this new feature. First, it is still in beta, meaning what I'm going to show you now is probably going to change or maybe it doesn't look exactly the same on your end. It's going to change. It's going to evolve. That's the nature of being in beta mode for Canva. It's just a way for them to test it out, to receive some feedback. So that's the first thing. The second thing is that this feature is going to be available for everyone and on every device. So mobile, web, the Canva app, and it should already be rolled out since September already. Now, that being said, let's jump into the demo. I have a blank document right here. So the first thing, where do you find 
text to image. Well, just like the other apps, you will have to scroll down all the way to your more button right here. And then you should see under create something new right here, you should see this new logo. It's purple and it has a text and then convert it to some image right here. It says text to image. So click on that. And this is the module. This is what you will see. So describe the image you want to see. So basically you just type in a sentence and Canva will turn that into a visual that's pretty cool that's also pretty trendy at the moment everybody's talking about this technology so i love that canva integrates that into their product even though it's not perfect yet i love that we are already playing around with this so let's see what we could do we have some suggestions by canva a panda riding a bike through a city with depth of field a light watercolor painting of a koi fish in a pond yeah pretty boring photo of a magical forest city from the future that's a bit more interesting canva also gives us with this feature a choice between different styles okay so we have a photo a drawing 3d a painting pattern or concept art or the first button, it just surprised me. So basically it's random. All right, let's try this bad boy and see what Canva can generate for, let's start easy, all right? Let's try a kitty riding a pink bike. Okay, so a kitty riding a pink bike. All right, and let's see, surprise me, like surprise me Canva, go for it, impress me. So we see Canva doing its thing right here. This is like, it's hard transforming these images from your head. All right, uh, there we go guys. We have a kitty riding a pink bicycle. And not only the bicycle is pink, but the kitty is pink too. And then the second one we have here is the pattern one, which is also interesting. I prefer the kitty with its pink bicycle right here. It's cool. It looks like the kitty's nose is uh, some sort of a ribbon or something. I don't know, it's just cute. So I like that. Let's try something else, okay? I will start again. I want to see how Canva can build upon this one, okay? So I'm gonna add some info in this sentence. This time I want a childish drawing of a kitty riding a pink bike. So a childish drawing of a kitty riding a pink bike. And I'm going to select this time the drawing style and see what Canva comes up with. I'm gonna move this one here and see if Canva really understands my query of, I want a drawing. This one was pretty much already a drawing. I'm curious to see what would come up for a photo, for example, but let's see the drawing first. Oh, there we go. That's pretty cool because it is quite childish, like both of them are quite like spot on like what a child like this one is like already a child that can draw like i am basically at that level of drawing so if you had asked me to draw a kitty riding a pink bike i'm not sure i would have done much better than than this one the blue one this one is really advanced already but uh, it looks kind of childish as well and the kitty seems a little bit mad all right good so i love this feature so far i think it's pretty creative and it's pretty amazing what we can do now with artificial intelligence so i want to push this a bit further i'm going to delete all of these and i'm going to try Try one last query but this time I'm gonna go a bit more niche a bit more deep into the culture to see if the intelligence can really follow and keep up with my queries I want to try a photo of Biggie Smalls the notorious B.I.G eating broccoli okay let's see what Canva can do for this query so Biggie Smalls eating broccoli let's see and i want a photo good luck wow just wow this is pretty awesome let me show you guys i have this photo right here of biggie small eating broccoli he also has like a shirt that matches the broccoli this is amazing and then we have this one right here also biggie smalls also eating a big fat broccoli. Well, that was pretty amazing. I love this feature so far. There's just one thing I want to let you know before we wrap up this feature discovery is that there is a limited amount of images you can generate per day. I believe this limit is 10 or maybe it's been pushed to 15. If you do know the answer, let me know in the comment section how many images you can actually generate with text to image per day. 
I would be interested to know. And now, moving on to new feature number four already. But before I continue with the new features, I would love for you guys to hit the like button on this video. It would just take you one second. For me, it means the world. It means that YouTube is gonna push this video and show it to more people. So that's very good for us YouTubers who make a living with YouTube. So we can continue creating this free content for you guys. Thank you for your support on the channel. We truly appreciate that both Diana and I. And now, back to the video. The next new feature is called PSD import and this basically allows you to import into Canva a Photoshop file, so a .psd file. It also works with Illustrator files, with PowerPoint files, but basically it's a whole new set of formats that will be recognized, accepted by Canva. When you simply drag these files into the Canva homepage, you will start uploading this file to Canva and then when you open it, it will be editable. So that's pretty amazing. So I'm just going to start from the Canva homepage right here. So you can use the upload button. Okay, so I'm gonna click on upload. I'm gonna browse here. So it is this one right here. It's a pretty heavy uh, document. You will see 90 megabytes. So I'm gonna open this one and Canva is gonna start uploading it. You see importing your file. It's importing right here. So the rollup listery.psd file. It's only going to take a couple of seconds to upload depending on the speed of your internet connection. All right, my PSD file is uploaded. Let's open it and let's see what's inside this PSD file. Okay, I'm gonna first close this window here that asks me to give some feedback on the feature. And I can see that there are a bunch of different things uh, basically corresponding to the different layers I had in my Photoshop file. I have a photo, I have a, a color bar right here, I have a phone with a QR code in it. Everything is clickable, editable. The only thing that didn't work so well is the font. I had a custom font for this PSD, but also it's because I don't have the font installed on my computer. So that's completely fine. I can change this to any font because now everything here is editable. So super easy. And I really love that we can now import Photoshop files or Illustrator files because as designers, it is very likely that we do have some Photoshop or Illustrator projects. And this is really a nice way to centralize everything you need in Canva, even your Photoshop files. So well done Canva. I think this is gonna be super useful for people who used Photoshop a lot before and are transitioning to Canva just because it has become so good and also it doesn't cost you half of your rent. A couple of things to say though about this feature, it is only going to be available for paying users. So Canva Pro, Canva for Teams, Canva for Education and Canva for Nonprofits. Free users won't have access to this feature and it is going to work on all the platforms as well. If you're a pro user, this should already be rolled out to your account. All right, moving on to the next feature. The next feature is a very simple one. It is called page hiding. So up to today or up to very recently, you could only hide pages on a specific doc type on your presentation documents only. But Canva now made this feature available for all of their document types. So basically you can open up any design and you can hide a page. Let me show you how I have this logo design document right here. So it's obviously not a presentation because it's squared. In order to hide a page, just select one of your pages, click on the three little dots right here in the thumbnail view and then locate the hide page button right here. So click here and now you see when you go in view mode, you should see page one. If I skip to page two and then see one logo, two logos and the three logo layout. So let me get out and show you that I have one, two and the three logo layout. We didn't see page two right here because it is hidden. That's actually the whole point of this feature. So let me unhide this by doing the same manipulation. Click on the three little dots, unhide page, just like that. And actually I've seen something else. I've noticed a lock page icon right here. This little padlock right here. I believe this is new too. Not completely sure about this, but I haven't used that before. So you can lock your entire page 
straight from here and unlock your page as well i imagine yes you can unlock your page and lock your page just like you are hiding your pages from the three little dots right here so again very straightforward very simple feature and this is already available to all users free paid everyone from all the devices as well so just go ahead and try it out I have two more features to go, so don't go anywhere because the next one is going to be super useful for a very specific use case. The feature is called Bulk Create, and this is going to be for those of you freelance designers who are designing business cards, maybe for an entire department of a company, wedding invites, or if you are creating badges for a conference, so all types of designs where the design might remain the same, but you need to swap photos, names, Names, titles, email addresses, these kind of things. Let me jump into a business card template that I just opened from the Canva library to show you how Bulk Create actually works. So I can see this uh, business card design has two pages, okay, with like a very traditional, I would say, business card layout. So in order to find bulk create, you will have to locate your more button one more time. So go there and then you should see here in the first row, you should see bulk create, okay? I'm gonna click here and Canva tells me you can add your data, okay? You can upload data as a CSV file. So a CSV is a comma separated v for something forgot comma separated the something comma separated values of course so you can upload your data either via a csv file comma separated value that you can generate with google sheet or with excel you can generate this type of files by importing your spreadsheet into this format or you can enter your data manually in a table that canva provides for you so i don't have a csv handy here i'm just going to enter my data manually so you'll see canva already has two columns pre-filled for you i'm just going to add one more name right here I'm going to add Ronnie Hermosa, my email, so Ronnie at gmail.com. And that's not my real email, so yeah, don't bother writing me there. And you can also add some text. I have two buttons here, one that says add text and another one that says add image. Very interesting. I'll come back to this in a second. And I'm going to use the add text button right now. So Canva is going to create another column, which is going to be useful because on this design, I had phone number. So I can put in phone number here. And I'm going to add some random numbers. Uh, yep, like so. I'm going to just copy this number three times because I don't really care about this dummy. And then after clicking on add text again, I added another column and this one is going to be for the job title, okay? So John Smith is actually uh, well, the CEO. Then we have Jane Jones who is the CFO and Ronnie, I'll be the coffee guy coffee guy who brings coffee to everyone. All right, my data is ready. I have created this table via Canva. The last thing I want to do is to add some images. So I'm gonna click on add image and I can choose an image for each of these lines of people here in my spreadsheet, which is pretty convenient. So just click on the plus button here. I'm gonna change image for photo and I'm gonna start adding photos. So right here, I am in my project, it seems so. So everything that is already uploaded into Canva, I can use. So I'm gonna use my biggest Smalls eating broccoli images here, which is pretty cool. I have these two and for Ronnie, I'm gonna have a photo of myself. Where am I? Let's see. Yep, let's grab this one right here and we are good to go. I'm gonna click on done and see what happens. All right, so I am here in the left side panel right here. So connect data to your elements. Now that we have imported, inputted the data, we need to let Canva know what is what on this business card right here. So the first one is going to be the name, all right? So I'm gonna click on the name text box, right click with my mouse and connect data locate this button that says connect data. This is going to be the name, okay? Next, you go to phone and similarly right-click, connect data, connect to my phone, 
uh, location, I forgot to add location, so it's gonna remain the same. And then I had the job title. So again, connect data, and I'm gonna go job title. I forgot to do the email right here, so connect data and this is gonna be my email. Oh yeah, I need to add my photo. So I click on the photo right here, connect data, and yeah, photo, perfect. I am now ready to see this button that says continue. I'm gonna click that. Okay, so apply data, create three pages based on the data you entered. Yes, I want the pages for all of these people. And I want Canva to bulk create these pages. So what's gonna happen is that Canva is going to create a new document so you don't mess up your original template, but you have a new document with the same layout and each of the people will have their custom information on their business card. So we have John Smith with his phone number and his uh, email address, he's the CEO. Then we have Jane Jones and then we have Ronnie here uh, that looks a bit blurry, but that's probably because this photo was not high enough resolution. But we have everything here. Canva bulk created this entire set of business cards. Imagine you had a thousand business cards to create. Well, that would be a very useful way of creating all of this design, these cards, without having to copy paste thousands of times. So very, very impressed by this feature. And this is going to be a pro feature. So Canva Pro, Canva for Teams, Canva for Nonprofit, Canva for Education, not available for free users. But I think this is really worth paying for because this is going to save you so much time. All right, moving on to the last new feature for today, which will also make you save a bunch of time. All right, the seventh and last new feature for today is called Private Embeds. And this one will allow you to embed seamlessly all sorts of designs, media on your Canva design, on the design you're working with by just copying and pasting the URL of this media you want to upload straight into your Canva document. So let me show you how it works with a different of case studies, but this is already rolled out to everyone, all users, on every platform. So yeah, it should be there for you already. Now let's jump into the demo. So for that, let me come back to a document we already used during this tutorial. This is the video one. I'm gonna create a new page simply. And I'm going to start with a very simple use case, which is I want to embed another Canva document straight into this one. Okay, so I have a document right here. It is a uh, presentation document which is part of the Canva master course. Let's say I want to embed this presentation into my other page, okay? So I'm just going to copy the URL. You don't see it here because I'm not recording that part of my screen, but I'm just selecting the entire URL and copying it, Control C. Now I'm gonna come back to my document here and I'm gonna Control V and boom, Canva is going to embed my presentation, my other Canva design right here. And it says double click to interact. So I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna double click on this. So you can navigate your slides back and forth. You could go full screen, I'm gonna click here. You're not gonna see the entire screen because I'm not recording the entire screen. But one thing you can see here, you can jump from slide to slide by just tapping or clicking on the slides. So this is new, I believe. So not only it is a new way of embedding media, but it's also a new way of viewing the embedded media to have a much more consistent presentation experience within Canva. So the embeds now look much better as well. So that's pretty much the feature to simply copy your URL and paste it in your document. You don't need to click on embed. You don't need to do all of the things you used to do before. Let me show you a second use case. I'm gonna delete this embed right here. For this, I just click on it and use the little uh, delete button. This time, I'm going to embed a Facebook post. So I posted this video on my Facebook page, Ronnie Hermosa, and I'm just going to click on the three little dots right here and copy the link of this video. Okay, now it is copied. I'm gonna go back to my uh, document and similarly, Command V to paste the document. So now we'll see the video is here. I can see it's from Facebook. It has a little Facebook watch logo here. I can play it. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create these six different profile picture ideas. Okay, in... so you can see it's a tutorial from Diana. 
And what's cool about it is that I can also interact with the rest of the elements here on Facebook. If I click on my little profile picture here, the user will be redirected to my Facebook page. So this is pretty cool if you want to drive traffic to your social media. Now, obviously this will work with all sorts of embeds from all sorts of sources. It does work with YouTube as well. You can embed your own videos, videos you find on YouTube. There is really no limit to this. You just need to have the URL of a specific video. So let's take this one, for example, from Think Media. Share, I'm gonna copy the link. And once you have copied it, just control C it in the Canva document and it will be there for everyone to enjoy with their functionalities, their links and everything will be working. All right, guys, this is it for today's episode of What's Hot. Let me know in the comments which one of the seven features is your favorite one. We've had some very awesome features. My favorite has to be text to image and then maybe close second, the bulk create feature, which I believe is very powerful. But hey, let me know what was your favorite in the comments. And I'm gonna leave you guys with a link to the What's Hot playlist right here. So if you want to know what's hot in Canva, not just this month, but also the previous month, this is the series you want to start watching.